All right. Hey, good morning, Kirby World. We are positive. Welcome to another year and growth workshop where we meet every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, right up till January 6th at 10 and noon Eastern time to talk about Kirby life and to give away another iPhone 13 Pro Max. Right, Randy? Randy. Uh-oh. Yes, back. Josh. He's I am back. back. <laughs> I've been in the Dagobon system with Matt, Master Maniachi, learning the ways of the lightsaber, Make it which easy you there. need practice with. <laughs> Make it easy there, buddy. Yes, I'm back. Yes, we are getting a little punchy here at World Headquarters. <laughs> we were going to have John. I was John was going to stand in, but the problem is, if John stood in, this is all the bigger it would have been. So we had to have another stand-in for me. There we go. <laughs> All right. Tell them about Kirby Life. Hey, Kirby Life, guys. We've been talking about this now since November, and uh, it's actually made an impact in Kirby, both domestically and worldwide. We're going to continue to talk about it. We all know that Kirby Life people bring in the best recruits. Some of our top distributors and supervisors were all Kirby Life. The president of the Kirby company was a Kirby Life recruit. The president international gave you a testimonial on he was a Kirby Life recruit. So Kirby Life recruits really bring in the sharpest and most talented people. And all you have to do is share the Kirby opportunity with a person. Maybe it's a friend, a relative, a person you meet at a, hey, at a New Year's Eve party that you might be going to. And they're looking for something different, something more rewarding. Well, is Kirby different? Yes. Is Kirby more rewarding? Absolutely. For those that come in and do the program. And when you bring that person in, they come into training, they sell their first Kirby, get the icebreaker, you're awarded through the Kirby Life program that we've been talking about. You're rewarded that $100 and some distributors have done more as an incentive just to bring people in. When that dealer goes on that you personally recruited to sell six, you're awarded a free Kirby. Now that free Kirby you can keep as inventory for your future office, you should be thinking about the future. It could be used, uh, you could give it away as a gift, as a present, you could take it for personal use. We suggest you sell it because when you sell it, the proceeds from that sale, less the sales tax and any finance fees go to you as profit and commission. And John, with a free Kirby, we've talked about this so many times and Larry Chai did an unbelievable job explaining to you the potential that you have in bringing in Kirby Life Recruits and increasing your income over next year. But just one Kirby Life Recruit a month is almost $2,000 and did it every month in 2022, sharing that opportunity. It's a $20,000, $24,000 bonus just for not selling one more Kirby, but the one you would sell would be free. And it's just it's just a program we're proud to promote here at World Headquarters. We hope you're proud to share that opportunity with everybody else. It's a great deal, right? And yep. those people go with you, like you said, they go with you when you open your own office, you go into business for yourself, by bringing in Kirby Life recruits, you, you could have a ready-made, already trained recruiter, Obviously. ready to start from day one, ready to go team leaders, and of course, Man, as many as ready to go dealers you can handle, right? Also, FDs and DTs get to play Kirby Life very simply when that Kirby Life recruit sells their sixth machine and they get that free Kirby or they get that big paycheck from selling that free Kirby, take a photo and send that to marketing at Kirby.com. And each one you send in will give you a name and a hat for a drawing that we're going to have tomorrow, right? Right, right? at the end of the Coming month soon. for 12 more free Kirbys. So if you have a Kirby Life recruit that sold six and you haven't sent it into marketing yet, do it today, marketing at Kirby.com with the free Kirby, the sponsor and the recruit with that big payday check and send it in so you get your name in the hat for the drawing for December's 12 free Kirbys. On top of that, when that Kirby Life recruit hits 15, you would receive 10 Damn. bonus points on the Achieve and Succeed Kirby Inventory Campaign going on right now that ends tomorrow, right? In one day. It is yep. tomorrow, it right? Is tomorrow. It's it ends tomorrow, where we're going to give away, the company's going to give away 480 more free Kirbys. Unbelievable. So if you have a Kirby Life recruit that hit 15 this month, or last month, or any month during the campaign period, send it into marketing at Kirby.com. Make sure your supervisor is aware of it. So you we make sure that you get those 10 bonus points 
Because as we've seen for the last uh, bunch of campaigns, Randy, sometimes the big difference between winning and not winning are those extra bonus points, right? You know, hitting your quota is one thing and achieving your sales purchase is also important, but getting those Kirby Life recruit points at just make, make winners is what they do. They push them over the top. You know, we've been talking about this again since November. We, we started with 50 autograph footballs. We were given away just to bring someone into an orientation. And we had 50 football winners. Then we started with the Kirby Life Rewards Program, all right, the mugs we were giving. We've given away 21 mugs. And of those people now, we have over 80 recruits that have come in. But unfortunately right now, I don't have any new names to announce for people that have come in to either get the Kirby Life Reward mugs, which is again, only bringing one person into an orientation, we're going to send you a mug, but when you bring in two people, all right, between now and January 5th, all right, two people into the orientation, you're going to get a chance to win this iPhone 13 Pro Max. We've given away three iPhones. This will be our fourth one, and you definitely want to be in that drawing. Not because of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. That's a wonderful gift to receive, but because, <laughs> John says yes, but because of that Kirby Life person that you bring in that goes on to sell that one maybe those those six or 12 or 15 that helps the distributor win those extra points. So right now with the parties you're gonna be going to and the people you're gonna be seeing over the holidays, please take advantage of this. Get a Kirby Life mug. We wanna announce your name. The mugs will be going out. The footballs are out. I've seen some people have already received them, yeah. which is very positive, but get the mug and get your name in that drawing. We do have a few people in the drawing right now, I believe. Um, I'm not sure, but I think we have a few people in the drawing right now for this iPhone 13 Pro Max, but your chances are great to bring in two people to put your name in there for a drawing that's going to be held on January 6th. I'd say if you got two recruits between now and January 5th, you'd have a pretty good chance at picking up a brand new iPhone 13 Pro Max. How can you go wrong? It makes, if you don't want it or you don't need it, makes a great Christmas gift, either right? Way, yep. But either way, it's my pleasure to introduce and privilege really to introduce our next guest speaker. And really, I can't think of a better way to end the year. The closer. Right? The, the, the closer, right? The divisional supervisor of the Golden West Division, Mike Lopez. Michael started, he became an FD. Oh, we didn't get the whole start time when he started. And that's kind of an abbreviated, but Michael became an FD in June of 1987 and had a BMIB as a factory distributor of 1,522 sales. In case you thought I stuttered, that was 1,522 sales in one month. Mike is a diamond circle distributor having her gold circle status seven times. As an FD, Mike and his organization sold over a thousand Kirby's in a month, six different times with that unbelievable BMIB. Mike was promoted to a regional vice president in 2009 and has been a divisional supervisor since 2011. Michael's doing an outstanding job with the Golden West Division. Let's hear from my friend, Mike Lopez. Thank you very much, John. If we were on the top, if we were partners on the top 50 posts, that's what we'd look like. I'd be down here in the corner. You'd be right there. But uh, hey, thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be on and on the year-end growth seminars. I'm happy to be here with John and Randy. And I know John had a big retirement and everybody should know that John's not actually retiring. He'll be on the field. He's not dying. He's still going to be here. I know he's a little sensitive about that. We're not pushing him out the door and never see John again. And I do have my little mustache on and my picture in the back because uh, John has definitely meant a lot to my career, like most of you, I'm sure. And he'll do a lot more to help our careers going forward as well. So, uh, I mean, I guess you just retired from the Kirby office, but now you're back to the field. And that's definitely where we love to have you. Hey, I'm talking about thinking big, acting big, getting big. Surprise, surprise, surprise. The beautiful thing about this speech is I always make notes, but I never really pay attention to them. So it's always different every single time. So hopefully this one works out okay. Um, but look, a thought's a thing. We know that already. And thinking big is where it really all starts, right? I mean, there's a quote that I read a long time ago. You're either the master of your mind or a slave to it, right? Well, your thoughts really are things. So whatever is in your mind consistently every single day, that really is what's going to control you. So the first and foremost thing you have to do is get control of it, right? And how do you get control of your mind? Well, you have to feed it just like your body, right? You have to feed it. You have to exercise your mind. You have to only fill it with positives, right? You can't get caught up in negatives 
at any kind of level. You can't get caught up in negatives in, in joking around, right? You can't get caught up in negatives of the people that you hang around with. I mean, everything always has to be positive. That's going in your mind all the time. And you have to adapt the attitude of it can be done. So let's do it, right? Solutions only, no excuses. And that does take some time, work and effort. But more than anything, it takes discipline. And to do great things in Kirby and to do great things in life, you got to be disciplined. I think talent will only get you so far. But if you're disciplined to do the same things consistently every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the same time, the same effort, right? The same level of enthusiasm and excitement. If you can do that consistently, you're definitely going to achieve great things. And discipline does condition your mind that way as well, because eventually your body only knows one way to do things all the time. Does it know sometimes to show up at nine, sometimes show up at 10, sometimes show up at 930. When you're disciplined, you're doing everything the right way consistently. You're doing everything all the time, no matter what. And what discipline does, it conditions your mind to believe that you can make it happen. See, a lot of us, when we start off with these big goals and we start thinking and dreaming, how do we feel? We feel excited, right? We're pumped up. We start, you know, to vision the future, right? We start with the end in mind. We look at the goal. Man, if I could sell 24 personals in January, if I could hit 600, 1,200, 2,400, if I could sell 3,000 in a year, if I could win a 500 Rolex, if I can bring in personal recruits and get a free Kirby every single month, we think about all that. We get excited. We'll feel great for a second. But then if we're not conditioning our mind and we're not disciplined, the self-doubt starts to sink in because our actions aren't matching with our dream and our words, right? Our action is to bring in a bunch of Kirby Life personal recruits, but we're not wearing the button every day and we're not making an effort to you know, bring people in. We want to do three demos every single day, but we're showing up late. We're not getting personal knock-ins, right? We want to sell 24, but we're not always doing the five months and we're prejudging. So you really got to line up your mind and, you know, your mind and your goal where they're going to connect. The other thing you have to do when I talk about the vision, you know, you hear people talk about a vision board and they put pictures on there and they look at it every day to remind them to get them excited. Let me flip that on you because we're all dialed in a little bit differently. Maybe for some of you, the vision board and looking, thinking that way helps, but let's put an anti-vision board, right? Let's say you don't get started. Let's say you don't do anything different. Let's say you don't do, you don't think big and you stay just like you are right now. Where are you a year from now? Where are you five years from now? Where are you 10 years from now, 20 years from now? What are your personal relationships like? What kind of place are you living in? Are you living in a place? Do you have a car? Do you not have a car? You know what I mean? Picture your life if you never think big or dare to dream big and put in the time and the work and effort in Kirby, where are you going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now? Think of it that way. Not only that and thinking of the failure, but thinking of all the people that told you, well, I told you so. I told you to quit. You shouldn't have do it. Now you wasted all that time. Why don't you think about that? Make that some kind of vision board. I mean, that should motivate you. You know, I heard a quote the other day from um, Conor McGregor, right? And I'm sure a lot of you probably heard it or seen if it's on your story or something like that. We all have access to the same information. But he talks about how the lack of your commitment is disrespect to the people that depend on you. Like, who depends on you? Is it your family? Is it your spouse? Is it children? Is it future children? Is it people in your organization? Is it dealers on your team? Is it peers that you work, at, work with, right? I mean, that lack of commitment, if you're not thinking big, you really do have a lack of commitment to the Kirby business. You do have a lack of commitment to yourself. But more importantly, yeah, you can let yourself down, sell yourself on it and get over it. But how about the people that depend on you to do great things and to lead people and to lead people as well, right? And to be, to be the great example. The next one is acting big. You, know, you heard me talk about discipline. My dad used to always say a rolling stone gathers no laws. I mean, you have to have constant action. And constant action and massive action greatly improves your attitude every single day. Because when you're putting in the time and the work and the effort, you are seeing progress. You can't go to work in Kirby and put the time and the work and effort and not get the results. It just can't happen. But again, you have to start loving maybe the things you don't want to, you know, that you don't like to do. You got to start loving knocking doors. You got to start loving knocking doors in the rain, right? I was at an office yesterday and the gal was all excited because she had her hood and an umbrella and a big rain boots and she was super pumped to go out there and knock in the rain because people let you in easy and everything else. And I'm looking at it thinking, she must be crazy. I'm not going out there knocking in the rain. And I say that jokingly, but in my head, I'm thinking, wow, is she psyching herself up, right, to go ahead and overcome that? Or she's just so excited about her goals and being a new DT and wanting to qualify to be a distributor next year. Do you understand what I'm saying? When your goals and dreams are big enough, you easily do the things you don't normally enjoy doing because you're doing it for a greater cause. 
And when you're not thinking big and have those big goals, what are you really working for? Are you going to knock in the rain if you're just working to pay your bills? Are you going to knock in the rain if you just want to pay the cell phone bill or, you know, a car payment or something like that? Is that really going to motivate you to push you to go out there and do those things? Or are you going to knock from Ken to can through whatever you're going through if you're thinking about having your own home? living in the neighborhood you want to live in, kids going to the school you want to go to. Like, get what I, I mean, that's really why that thinking big in the very beginning, the thought's a thing. That's why it's the most important thing where it starts. And then it gets easier the rest of the way. But massive action always, always overcomes everything you want to do. And don't, be, and don't make excuses. You know, people always say, if you, you know, make excuses, you're going to find one you're going to like. But there's never going to be a perfect time to do it. Right. We always wait for the perfect time. Well, once I get a van, right, or once I get this taken care of, or once I get five months of 15. I mean, some of us make it so hard for us to move forward because we keep putting hurdles in our way. Right. You want to qualify as a dealer. Then I want to qualify as a team leader. Then I want to qualify as a canvasser. Then I want to I mean, you want to qualify every single position so you can be a master of it. Just get qualified. Right. Just take that step. Take that leap to the next level. That's what you got to do. You don't the, the enthusiasm will give you the energy to learn all the different aspects of the business on your way. But if you're always waiting for the perfect time to make it happen to recruit, it's never going to happen for you because there's always going to be a reason not to do it, right? Whether it's situations that we're going through now, whether it's whatever it is, there's always going to be a re reason why it isn't perfect to do something. But there's no, there's no reason to make a reason, right? There's no reason to make an excuse. You can't hold yourself back. And that's all we're doing. We have that self-doubt. And that's the other part about thinking and acting big, right? It's overcoming that self-doubt. How do you do that? One, like I said earlier, right? By feeding your mind correctly. And two, the people you hang around, right? Don't hang around the dream snatchers. The only reason why people tell you you can't do something or try to tell you to, you know, have low expectations because what happens if you hit your goal? What happens if you pass them? They know you're not going to be around anymore. What happens if you pass them? They know that, hey, if this guy can go ahead and do it, he's making that happen. They take it the wrong way, right? And when they take it the wrong way, they take it the wrong way because they're looking at, well, that shows that I'm not really making the most of my opportunity as well. Look, it's lonely at the top and you're gonna make new friends and meet new people. You can't always bring everybody with you, but you gotta be careful of that network of people that you talk to and hang around with all the time. Because the most precious thing you have in this business especially is your attitude. And when you start hearing a little doubt, the self doubt that is down there somewhere inside of us starts to creep up and say, you know what? you know, I think they're right. I think they can. I think, I think maybe I should take it easy. You know, maybe I shouldn't. And then why do we do that? Because again, we have fear. You got to overcome the fear. You know, we have fear because what if I don't hit my goals? And not that we've always hit every single goal that we set out to do, but if that belief is strong enough inside, right? The way the mind works, right? The stronger your belief is, it triggers ways to overcome the problems that happen. Right. So if you believe without a doubt you're going to hit your goal, your mind will work harder on overcoming the objections, the hurdles, the things that come at you along the way, because that's what it's programmed to do. Right. If you don't have big belief in your goals, if you don't have a strong self-belief in yourself that you can make it happen when these things come up again. Here we go. Here we go again. Every time I go out to make something happen, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Look, it's just like when you're canvassing, right? There's certain houses we always get in on, right? If it's an Escalade in the driveway or at one point a long time ago, if they had a PT cruiser, right? We'd always get in certain houses or Christmas lights. It was all belief. It didn't matter who lived in the house. Half the time, the people that had the lights on the house probably weren't even their lights, right? They were just living there and never took down the lights from the old person. But because our belief was so strong, whatever objection they gave us, we overcame for that reason, right? And we had success that way. Well, it's the same thing with, with, with goals. It's the same thing with selling 24, 30, or 100 personals in a month. They're selling 1,000 curries a month as a distributor. Your belief has to be so strong that you can make it happen. And then the mind is triggered to overcome all those objections as, as you go along. And then that builds the confidence. And again, building the confidence is, yeah, definitely walking the talk. But building confidence is giving yourself a pep talk every single day. You know, Jimmy was on the other day doing the incantations. And it's funny because, you know, we all, you know, we love to joke and play around and all that kind of stuff. But you can't go to a Kirby meeting and sing songs and be negative. Try it. Try being in the meeting today if you guys sing songs. Hell, hell, the gang's on. You, you just can't do it, right? You can't do it. It's impossible. By the time you're done singing Kirby songs, you have a smile on your face for whatever reason, right? The blood's pumping, the body's moving. It's the same thing with incantations. You know, when I started as a uh, regional vice president or divisional supervisor, whatever it was called at the time, there was a period for a couple of weeks where I didn't go to Kirby meetings. 
And because I didn't go to Kirby meetings, I was just dealing with all the paperwork and trying to figure out what territory I was going to have and how we were going to travel and stuff. And I realized over time that my attitude was off. And I didn't realize it until I went to a Kirby meeting and they started singing songs and they started doing the incantations like Jimmy did the other day. And it just showed me really how important that stuff is when you're not a part of it. Look, how many times do you have people, like brand new people come to the meeting, right? And they're all excited. They're like, wow, it's a great place, man. Look at the atmosphere, the enthusiasm. Or maybe you have friends, or you're bringing a Kirby life. They're like, wow, this place is great. Because most jobs, most places, these guys and girls go every day. One, nobody's excited to see them when they show up. Two, nobody's walking around saying positive, 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 right? And, and three, what's the atmosphere? Come in, do your job, and go home. There's no, there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that they're working for and chasing for, right? Again, when you're thinking big and there is that pot of gold, or is there is that big dream that you're chasing that you're going after, it creates natural enthusiasm. So thinking big, protecting the mind, that's everything, right? Staying away from the dream snatchers. Again, understanding your level of commitment, right? Is direct, directly related to the people that depend on you, okay? And if you're not putting in that commitment, you're letting those people down. It's embarrassing, right? And I don't say that to you, but I say that to me, right? I mean, that really hit home to me. There's always things that do that. The other part, again, was seeing the future in a positive way, but maybe you got to see the future in a negative way if you didn't do it, you know? And nothing is worse than the pain of regret. Looking back, well, what if? What if I would have opened up? What if I would have gotten that first qualifying month, right? What if I would have given it a full 90 days like the recruiter told me? What if, what if, what if? To me, that's the worst thing. And what would hit home to me as a Kirby distributor, you know, actually I, I got promoted in, I don't know, 2005 or six to distributor, 1987. I think it was a freshman in college or whatever, but hey, you know, the numbers get bigger and bigger as time goes on. Pretty soon it'll be 10 months at a thousand, but it is six months. Um, I remember being a, a new distributor and we had a big last quarter, right? We made gold circle our first full year, not our first full year as a distributor, but we made gold circle and we were behind and we had to sell like 1100 Kirby's in the last three and a half months of the year to do it. And everybody got committed. We all got excited, right? It was Kirby all the time, super positive, took off Thanksgiving, took off New Year's, I mean, Christmas Eve and Christmas. And we worked like hell and we sold 1100 something Kirby's and we were number two in the entire world of Kirby for that quarter. And a young man that started with me when I was a brand new DT that, that quit Kirby had walked into my distributor's office looking for me to see where I was, what I was doing. And he saw a poster and on that poster, it had, you know, my big head up there and I was number two in the world. And he called me up and he said, he started crying because we started in Kirby at the same time. And, and he was a hell of a salesman, right? And he was, he's a great young man, great guy, but he just never took that step. He just always had a reason why it wouldn't work or why he couldn't do it or things always happened to him. And these are his words to me because I can't believe that I didn't take advantage of that opportunity. And that's my biggest regret of my Kirby career altogether was I didn't take advantage like you because why couldn't I be number two in the world? You know, and that's the same thing. What if you are home one day and someone comes knocking on your door and they're like, oh, Kirby, I saw Kirby's a while ago. Who, who are you working with? You work with, uh, you know, so-and-so? Oh, no. And then they work for your friend, right? Or they work for your personal recruit or somebody you brought in. Look, the opportunity is real. You just got to think it. You got to believe it. And then you got to go out there and just get big. You got to take with both hands. You got to win everything right? You should make sure you're in that drawing for a coffee mug, an iPhone 13. You should make sure you're working and pushing for every pro club, every trip, Silver K, months of 15, 24, gold diggers, divisional rings, whatever it is, you want to get in the habit of winning all the time because winners win, right? You got to get tired of being number two, number three, number five, right? You got to get used to winning, being number one and being the king of the jungle, you know? And that's the last thing that I'll finish with, you know, with my kids going to school and stuff. Sometimes I'll play some YouTube videos and everything else like that. And uh, I'm a New York Giants football fan, which is embarrassing to say, but you know, we have won some Super Bowls in the past, just a long, long time ago. Some of you might not even been born, who the heck knows? But in their hype video, whatever, you know, it's got Ray Lewis on there, right? He's talking about the line and the gazelle, you know, how the you know, the lion wakes up in the morning and he's got to eat, he pushes and he motivates himself. But that is really what winners do. You know, don't be the gazelle. Don't be the guy walking around grazing in the field, smoking a cigarette or a vape on the corner, checking your Instagram, waiting for your team leader to, you know, to pick you up. You know, be that go-getter, be that lion, be that lion on the streets hunting, door to door to door, looking for the next one that's going to be a sale, right? You got to have that aggression and get that thinking going all the way if you really want to be a true champion, Kirby. 
Because really, if we're going to do this and it's more than a career, it's a lifestyle, what's your legacy going to be? You know, right? What are they going to read for you for your introduction one day? You know, as you move up, do you want to just be a 30 pluser, a 50 pluser? What do you want to be one of the greats? You know, John Padano, who they honored yesterday, be traveling around as one of the greats in the Kirby business. Everybody knows John Padano. He's a household name. John Padano, right? I might even try to grow a mustache once I hit puberty and I can get a full one like him. It'll be fantastic. But those are the things you look at to motivate you to get to the level of success that you want in Kirby. There's no better time to do it now because you got New Year's Eve coming up and everybody's going to make those goals. But who are you going to be? Are you going to be the guy saying, that's it. I'm quitting smoking. I'm quitting drinking. I'm going to make it happen. And then January 2nd, you're fishing for a cigarette, but that you put out one of the beers, right? And you're back to your old habits again. Or are you going to have a paradigm shift and change all your habits, right? And be the success story that you were meant to be. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Just a great, great, great talk. And uh, I got to tell you, all these year-end growth workshops, I mean, if you're watching every single one, you're really getting a lesson on success from highly successful people that want to share and tell you how to do it, right? I think the greatest thing about it is, is that they do share their testimonials and their stories and they make it where you look at yourself and say, I can do that. And if I just follow the ideas and the the scripts and the direction that these guys are giving you, I think that you can have all the things that they've had, if not more. And those are the things you just have to take advantage of the information that you're getting. And you know, Mike, maybe you uh, weren't an FD in 1987. You were probably <laughs> born in 1987, or maybe you started in Kirby in 1987. Because now that I look at it, 1987 was a long time ago. <laughs> okay, but look at, we got these mugs. Bring in one Kirby Life recruit to an orientation. Lo and behold, you'll get yourself a beautiful Kirby Life rewards mug. And if you get two people, what do they get? You're going to get the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Remember, in, in the, the drawing. 13 Pro Max in the drawing. <laughs> you, well, you get the, you'll get put your name into the drawing for the i13 Pro Max, which is something you definitely want to have. All right. And if I can just just for a moment, I know a lot of you have heard, you know, that maybe John is 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 retired from Kirby. He's not. I just want to kind of set the record straight. John is no longer, this is his last day here at Kirby World headquarters. He's still going to be involved in Kirby. As Mike said, he's going to be an actual intergalactical field consultant <laughs> traveling throughout the United States domestically. So it's really a big benefit to the field because now John's going to be there with you. And I promise you when John comes to your organization, I said this before, people come into your life for certain reasons. They always come into your life to either make your life better or sometimes they make your life worse, all right? In John's case, I know when he came into my life back in 1982, when I met him, he made my life better. And I know that he's gonna make your life better when he gets out and shares his information with you. I know from Dan and myself, we're gonna miss you here, but we're not gonna, we're still gonna be working with you, uh, but we're gonna miss him here at World Headquarters. But for the field organization, it's gonna be a tremendous boost to have him out there in the field. So John, I wish you the best luck in the next chapter, all right? At, the, at in in uh, working in the field with Kirby. It's just going to be exciting. All right. With that being said, thank you, Randy. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Kirby. Great job, Mike. Let's have a great big day. Sell a whole bunch of Kirby's today. It's a great day to sell, and it's a great gang that sells the Kirby. Right. We are positive. All right.